I welcome you in lecture 17 regarding technology transfer through strategic alliance and joint venture. And I am in the module of special purpose vehicle and I will specifically concentrate my talk on formation of special purpose vehicle. Now, in previous lecture, I talk with you how you should prepare yourself for formation of special purpose vehicle. And in this particular lecture, I am going through, uh, I am going to take through some of the steps which you should uh, do while you are going for formation of a special purpose vehicle. Now, if you look into my uh, PowerPoint slide, then you will find one side I have wrote the particulars and another side I have wrote the details of the document and information required. So, I am going to talk with you the both, but first I am going to talk with you the particular and then I will say that what are the supporting document you require for uh, this particular purposes. Like uh, you know the first thing which you do uh, is need to have a name of your company or the special purpose vehicle. And for that matter you need to have a suitable mix of uh, six names and these particular uh, names should not be resemble with the existing name of any other company which is already in existence or which is doing the business into the market. Now, you also should not uh, violate this particular name should not violate the provision of name and emblems act. Now, in names and emblem act you will find they said that some of the things are prohibited like using the word president or name of the existing president or name of the prime minister or the word prime minister. So, there is a series of words you will find which has been prohibited under the name and emblem act. So, you should not use those particular word, word in the name of your SPV or the company. Then you should apply to the ROC in uh, form 1A and you generally pay the fees of 500 rupees. Now, please remember this particular facility can be uh, is available now online. You can go to the MCA 21 website and check that particular name is available or not. So, this is becoming uh, quite uh, easy access and uh, online also you can apply for availability of uh, name 2. Now, uh, then you should uh, if, if you find that that particular name is not available then you should go for application of a fresh, fresh name. And after availability of the name, that particular name is valid for the 6 month. So, within the 6 month, you have to file all the registration document with the ROC. Now, to do this particular thing, you need to have couple of information and I am going to deal with you, with you relating to this particular information. The first one is the board is required to pass a resolution in their respective uh, uh, meeting. Uh, like you know as I have told you in case of the joint venture, the joint venture partners are there or the sponsor of joint ventures are there. That means, who are interested to promote this particular joint venture. So, they have to you know pass a resolution in their board itself. Many of the time you will uh, find that uh, the companies are interested to put their name or the brand name in the name of the new joint venture company. So, uh, if, if it is uh, you know uh, I mean a particular name say, say for example, if it is a uh, name of Infosys and Infosys is doing the joint venture with another company say IBM then in the joint venture company they might like to keep the Infosys uh, IBM joint venture private limited something like that or maybe Infosys uh, IBM because so that it can immediately give kind of a recognition or the brand value to this new joint venture. 
and uh, you know in this particular trend you will find quite common in case of the insurance company who are uh, you know delivering the insurance product in Indian market like you will find that these are Bharti AXA then you will find Tata EIA because people only in case of the financial uh, you know instrument people generally trust a particular brand. So, wherever the question of trusting the brand comes they generally put this particular uh, put the company's name in that uh, brand itself. Then you need to talk about uh, subscribe the equity share capital of the company uh, uh, starting in the manner and shareholding and then the make the necessary application with the ROC of this particular company. So, these particular two things that is you know what kind of uh, investment you are going to make in the equity as well as can they use the uh, brand name you have to take the decision in the board. And then you also need to decide that you are going to apply in the ROC and who is going to uh, apply this particular uh, thing. Now, the information which is required to provide is uh, name occ occupation and complete address of uh, the co promoters, co promoters is, uh, uh, is generally the joint venture partner or the sponsor in the joint venture and one of them need to sign in form 1A that means, which you are using for applying the name of the company. Uh, then you need to name of at least two promoter if it is a private limited company and seven in case of uh, public limited company and promoter uh, means are those people who are going to subscribe the memorandum of association and article of the association. I am going to talk about what is the memorandum of association and article of the association little later. These are known as a formation document or you can even call them a constitution document because how the company is going to run and what are the objective with which company is going to run you put everything into this particular constitution document. Now, you need to provide the information in which state you want to register your company. Then you need to propose a category of the company either you want to propose it as a private limited company or a public limited company. Uh, then you have to uh, propose it what kind of a liability this uh, promoter is going to share. Is it a limited liability or limited liability by the guarantee or it is a limited uh, liability of uh, limited liability by shares as well as the guarantee or it will be unlimited liability you need to decide this particular thing. Now, if it is a public limited uh, company then you have to decide uh, will it be a listed company or it will be unlisted company. Now, you need to uh, uh, you know propose uh, the brief significance of the said name that why you are proposing that generally in generally it is advised that you know the, the objective clause should have some kind of a relation with the proposed name of this particular company uh, and uh, your company's name should indicative of what kind of a business you are. Uh, carry forward like you have uh, 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 incorporated a company which is called Thomas Cook uh, private limited uh, travel uh, Thomas Cook travel private limited company and you start doing the business in software then you know it is a mismatch. So, there should be some kind of a relation between your objective and the name of the company. Now, uh, furthermore you need to give the voter ID number, passport number or driving license number those people who are putting their name uh, in, in the uh, subscription of the company email ID is optional. You need to give the permanent residential number state and country then permanent residential number uh, uh, with uh, uh, state and country and then present residential number and then you need to give a corporate identification number for any co Indian company uh, wherein that gentleman is a director or the promoter. Now, this corporate identification number is uh, you know created for last few years and every company are giving a unique identity number and through, through that particular identity number the companies are been identified. So, any, any issues relating to that particular company are basically tracked down by this particular 
number itself. So, if that particular company is uh, deploying any one of his uh, officers or the manager or the director or the promoter of that particular company is promoting the same company, then in that case you need to even give not only the uh, director identification number if he is a director, with that you need to give corporate identification number. So, that you know it can be tracked that who is a director and who is a company. Uh, who, which company who is promoting this new venture. Now, uh, you need to obtain the DIN that is the next step and DIN the full form of the DIN is director identification number. Director identification number is uh, required for every company who wanted to promote the company, because at the end of the day you have to propose the name of a directors and whoever name you uh, propose as the name of the director, he should have a director identity uh, identification number. So, you should get that particular director identification number and in the other side of my slide you will find that I have list down all the document which is required for this particular purpose. Now, please note in case of the Indian national, the said document are to be attested if that particular person is not staying in India, right? Uh, by notary or uh, practicing CA or other this particular person. Oh, uh, uh, and if he is a foreign national or NRI, then in that case, that notarization has to be done uh, in the foreign country or maybe notarization can be done even in India also. Now, uh, while attesting this particular document, the attesting authority must indicate uh, the name full name and the signature and the registration number, then you know su submit the translated copy if it is uh, if it is in, uh, in other language than that of a Hindi and the English and you know in case of the identity proof you need to give a birth certificate of that particular person if he is a natural person and if it is a company then in that case you need to uh, certify it a, 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 in that case you can you can put the uh, uh, dean of that particular uh, person who is a director of that particular company with the CIN which you need to submit with this. Now, next one is important thing is that you need to obtain the digital signature for the person who is uh, going to be a director of the company. And in other side, I have listed down what are the proof is required for getting the digital certificate, because digital certificate is mandatory, because most of the compliance document today you need to file electronically. And if you want to file those particular document electronically, then in that circumstances, you need to do a digital authentication. Now, uh, next step is formation of memorandum of association. And in the memorandum of association, please ensure that all the relevant clauses in the joint venture or SA agreement is been incorporated. So, whatever the objective clause of uh, you know or, or the main objective clause in in SPV's document, you need to draw it from the joint venture whatever you have decided in joint venture agreement or strategic alliance agreement. Now, what is memorandum of association and article of the association? I have told you a, a previous a, in my previous lecture, but let me repeat now. Memorandum of association article of the association is a formation document which is required for every company whenever you want to incorporate a company. And memorandum of association is uh, comprises of uh, information like uh, register office, name of the company, then what is the main objective, liability clause, then the subscription clause, all those particular things. At the same time, article of the association is uh, comprises of the information relating to how to manage the company. So, you need to detail out all this particular thing. Uh, 
So, document required in this particular case are generally the joint venture agreement, but please do remember joint venture agreement is not required to submit while you are submitting all the document to the ROC, but you have to uh, you know uh, draw the information or draw the objective clause from this particular joint venture agreement. Now, uh, next is you need to go for a declaration. Uh, many of the declaration, like uh, you 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 have to get the uh, uh, you know uh, declaration of the compliance in the form one, and this particular declaration of the compliance is generally given by the professionals or the director who is going to be a director of that particular company. Then you have to. Uh, uh, give the notice relating to the register office of the company and there is a form number 18 which I have given to you. Then you need to have a particular director, manager or secretary and their name should be mentioned in a form 32 who is going to discharge this particular function. And uh, if you are uh, uh, you know incorporating this particular company who shall carry out the all the necessary formality you need to give him a special power of attorney, special power of attorney. Generally, uh, these particular document are submitted by any charter accountant or a cost accountant or uh, many of the time you will find company secretary or the lawyer. Then they need to be given a special power of attorney, so that they can submit on your behalf. And again in the other side you will find I will detail out what are the information you need to uh, give and one of the important thing is that you need to tell that within which police uh, station jurisdiction your company's register office will be. And you might find unusual, but uh, this is there because there is a some kind of a criminal comp uh, some kind of a criminal charges can be framed against the company and because of that you need to give this particular information. Now, furthermore, if it is a foreign national and if the person is not available in India, a special power, a special power of attorney is need to execute it on non-judicial stamp paper of a valid requisite specified uh, further into this uh, document and the copy of the first port will be required for the veri verification. Now, uh, in, in case of uh, NRI as well as the foreign national, uh, the special power of attorney shall have to be executed uh, by the consulate general of the Indian embassy situated in that particular country. And in these particular circumstances, if you look at the other side, you need to give the consul letter from the director. That means, the person who is going to be a director of that particular newly formed company. So, this is important in case if you are uh, creating a joint venture uh, with uh, uh, your foreign partner and uh, there will be a possibility that you know one of uh, or uh, number of uh, board member will be a foreign national. So, in that uh, cases you, you need to do this particular exercise whatever I have shown in, in the last slide. Now, in this particular slide what I did I have basically you know given the step what you need to do and then I have given the name of the forms which you are going to fill it up and then you need to get a consent letter from the directors who will be the director after the incorporation of the company. Any agreement which is referred in the memorandum and article of the association that is uh, joint venture agreement or strategic alliance or which I have told you in my previous lecture that if you have an umbrella agreement and under that you have a several specific agreement in joint venture, then I will advise you that you should submit all the agreement uh, while you are submitting the memorandum and article of the association to the ROC for consideration. Furthermore, if you are entering into any agreement with the CEO or managing directors or CEO or CFO, then in that case those particular agreement you should submit before the ROC, because these are the key agreement and the key persons who are going to drive this particular company on the incorporation. 
So, this particular information should come in the public domain because whatever the information you are uh, uh, filing with the ROC, this information will be in the public domain. Uh, you need to give a special power of attorney to the professional who is going to comply uh, or submit all this particular document on your behalf and you need to pay the filing fees or the registration fees by the check. Please do remember, uh, please do remember that um, uh, you know your uh, registration fees is depending on what should be the authorized capital of yours. So, this is important for you because if you are not require a, a huge amount in the initial time as authorized capital, you should not put it as authorized capital. So, you should optimize on this particular fund so that you do not have to pay unnecessary registration charges or filing charges at the time of incorporation. Now, once you file all this particular document, register will issue you a registration uh, incorporation certificate and in general incorporation certificate sent by the register in the register office, uh, office to office by the speed post. So, once uh, your company is received the incorporation certificate or the date uh, it is mentioned in the incorporation certificates is the date, date of your company's birth and this is an important date you need to refer it uh, many of the compliance document this particular date again and again. Now, additional information is arrange a payment for application and allotment of money by all the directors or share taken or agreed to be taken. Then prepare the statement in lieu of prospectus if you are going for uh, public subscription or if you are uh, going for uh, uh, going for uh, you know initial public offer then in that case you should do this particular thing or even if you are going for a private placement then also you should prepare. Then you should uh, file a declaration form 20 by the uh, one of the uh, directors that all this thing has been carried, carried properly and you need to have a commencement of business certificate in case of a public limited company. Now, in this particular slide, some of the provision which I have mentioned, it is of a old act that is 1956 act. Because in, in under the new act, there is a uh, some notification is still due. So, it is governing by the old act and uh, possibly you know from after a few days you will find the new uh, form number as well as new for procedure and some of the provision is withdrawn like you know this uh, by the amendment of commencement of business certificate this is this particular concept is withdrawn now from the statute book but i do not think this particular uh, withdrawn provision has been notified so that is the reason i mentioned it here again you know commencement of the business certificate will be sent to you by uh, post itself. Now, in case of the capital structure, uh, if the proposed company is uh, authorized capital is a 1 lakh, uh, if it is a private limited company and 5 lakhs in case of a public limited company. But again, this per there is an amendment in the present act and they have actually withdrawn this particular authorized capital minimum uh, amount of authorized capital, but I, I, I do not think that is uh, yet notified. So, that is the reason I have given this particular old uh, you know information, because accordingly the companies has been allowed to be registered. Now, notification means you know there uh, might be amendment in the act itself. But until unless that particular amendment is notified in the official gadget, it is not come as a law or is not come as an operation of law. Now, uh, I have talked with you relating to what should be the author authorized capital for a company and uh, then you need to uh, pay everything in pay and accounts officer. Uh, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, New Delhi and all this particular thing is payable in New Delhi only. 
uh, you need to discuss about the composition of the board and in every limited company is required to have a minimum uh, two company which is a private uh, two director if it is a private limited company and the three director if it is a public limited company and you know uh, here in you know if you have mentioned a detail in the joint venture agreement that which are the kind of people is going to comprise your board then in that case it should move accordingly and you should uh, you, you you should have also mentioned this particular uh, agreement joint venture agreement under the EOA of the company. So, whatever has been mentioned in the EOA uh, number of people in your uh, board of director you should go ahead accordingly. So, in the board of director there might be you know some people who are the executive director, some people are non executive director, some people are independent director. So, whatever the composition you have proposed accordingly you should appoint the director in the board. Now, please do remember in, in case where I mean this was a pretty old provision. Now, this provision is not uh, you know replicated, but you know but let me tell you because it is still in the statute book. In case where the name of the director is not mentioned, the promoter who is subscribing the uh, memorandum and article of the association, he will be a default director of the company. Now, you also need to say that this is a profit making company or not a profit making company. If it is a non profit making company, then you have to additionally apply for a license under uh, section 25 of the old act and it is section 8 under the new act that means under uh, companies act 2013 and the central government is going to issue the certificate on based on certain criteria. Uh, and it might tell you that what are the do's and don'ts because uh, whenever you are getting this particular exemption, you are also not use this particular entity for any commercial venture because whatever the profit you are going to get out of that particular company, it might be utilized for a development of art, social cause, or for some other benefit. So you need to decide that uh, uh, you are going to put this particular SPV for or uh, for uh, a, you know uh, uh, for, for profit making or non profit making. Thank you.